In this video here, we're going to take a look at an introduction to moments. So if you've studied GCSE physics in the past, or you're currently studying A-level physics, then you've more than likely come across moments before. And in that case, then you should hopefully find this chapter here on moments quite straightforward. But if you haven't studied GCSE physics or A-level physics before, then don't worry, we'll start this chapter as if you have no prior knowledge of moments. So up to now, while studying mechanics, we have primarily looked at situations that just involve particles. And for that reason, we can ignore rotational effects. But for this chapter now, then what we're going to do here is begin to model objects as rigid bodies. And what this means then is we will now have to consider the size of the object as well as where the forces are applied. So let's just take a look at some examples here of moments. So examples of moments include the following here. So for example, opening and closing a door. Another example is a spanner turning around and up. And then for the very last example here of a moment, we could have a seesaw. So just a few different examples there of moments. So before we take a look then at any examples here, let's just discuss how we find the moment of a force. So let's take a look then at find the moment of a force about a point. So the moment of a force measures the turning effect of the force on a rigid body. So we can see our diagram here, right? F is some force. So the clockwise moment of F here, that's my force about P, is equal to the magnitude of F here times by D, where D represents the perpendicular distance. So as we just said then, this is simply the product of the magnitude of the force and the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation. And when you're evaluating moments here, you do also need to state the direction of rotation. And we'll see an example of that shortly as we work through a practice question. And then finally here, for the example given above, the distance given is perpendicular, as we can see here on the diagram, to the line of action or the force. But when this isn't the case, we will require trigonometry. So let's take a look then when the distance given is not perpendicular to the line of action or the force. So let's have a look then at moments involving trigonometry. So as mentioned then, if our force is not perpendicular to the line of action for the force, we require the use of trigonometry to find the perpendicular distance. So as we can see here from our diagram right, the distance here is not perpendicular. So in that case then, the clockwise moment of the force F here about P is equal to the magnitude of the force F here times by d sine theta here. So as a final point then, before we look at some examples here, a moment is a force multiplied by a distance. The units are newton meters, which we denote as nm here, or newton centimeters, which we denote as ncm, okay? So there we have it, a very quick introduction here to moments. We kind of, you know, take a look at the very foundations here of moments before we start looking at the more complicated things, which we'll get into shortly. In the next couple of videos here but for now just a nice quick introduction so that gives us everything that we need here then for our introduction to moments let's get started then with question one here so let's get started then with question one here so nothing too complicated for question one right all it asks us to do is find the moment of the force about the point p here so we can see on our diagram we have this force here of 10 newtons we have the point p we have this distance of four meters and this angle here is 30 degrees. Now for this example then, just notice here that this is not the perpendicular distance, right? So what this means then is we do need to use trigonometry here, okay? So using trigonometry then, we know that this length here would be d sine theta, right? So this would be d sine theta. So d is this distance here, which in this case is four meters. I'm gonna get four sine and then theta here, is this angle that's opposite what would be this length here, right? So I get four sine 30 there, okay? So for the moment then of the 10 Newton force about P here, let's just write this down. So for the moment of 10 Newton force about P, How would we evaluate this here? So this is going to be the magnitude of the force here, which is 10. And then we're going to times it by this here then of 4 sine of 30 degrees here. So 10 
times by four sine of 30 degrees. So this is the same then as 40 sine of 30 degrees here. So 40 sine of 30 degrees. Sine of 30, right? That's a half. So what I've got then is 40 times by a half here, which would give us 20 there. Okay. Don't forget the units here then. So we need our units here of Newton meters, right? We're working in meters, so it's Newton meters. And as we've mentioned here, we need to decide whether this is going clockwise or counterclockwise or anticlockwise, whichever you prefer. So the way to kind of deduce that, right? Imagine I was to kind of put my finger here, right? And I was holding this point up here, P. So this force then is applied, right? So imagine your finger's holding, um, you know, this object up, right? And once I apply this force then of 10 newtons here, which way is this going to go? Is this going to go clockwise or is this going to go anti-clockwise? Well, in this case here, right? Imagine you had your finger here. If I push upwards, right? If I push upwards, it's going to go clockwise like that, right? So this is 20 newton meters clockwise. Okay. Like so. Okay. And there we have it. So that gives us the solution there to question one. So let's just take a look then at one more question here. So we have question two, and for question two, it's all that the diagram below shows a sign hanging from a rod. The sign has a mass of five kilograms. So we can see the sign here, right? And this has a mass of five kilograms. So if we add that force on, that would be five G newtons. Okay. It then asks us to find the moment of the weight of the mass about these two given points here. So for part A then, it's the point B. And for part B, it's the point A. So a little bit confusing maybe, but hopefully that makes sense, right? So let's get started then with part A here. So for part A then, this is about the point B. So about this point here, okay? Now don't forget then, for the moment of a force about a given point, that is equal to the magnitude of the force times by the perpendicular distance here. So the magnitude of the force in this case here is simply 5G. Okay, so the magnitude of my force here is 5G. So this is for um, point B here. So for point B, okay. So as we said then, the magnitude of the force is 5G. And we're going to times this here then by the perpendicular distance here. So the perpendicular distance then is simply 6 meters here, right? So go from B to this force here. My perpendicular distance is 6 meters. So we've got 5G times by 6 here. In other words, I've got 30G, that's 30 times by 9.8 here, remember? If it doesn't state a value of G then, just take G to be equal to 9.8. So I've got 30 times by 9.8 here, which would give me 294 here, okay? Don't forget the units, so we're working in meters here, so it's um, 294 Newton meters. And we do also need to state the direction of rotation here, okay? So as we said in the introduction here, it is important that you state the direction of rotation. So again, imagine you kind of hold your finger here on the rod, right? I've got my finger here, I'm holding the rod up and this force then is applied downwards. So is this now gonna go clockwise? So is it gonna go this way here around a clock or is it gonna go anti-clockwise? Well, in this case here, if I was holding the rod with my finger here and I was to push downwards right with my other finger, it would go anti-clockwise. Okay, so it's 294 Newton meters anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise here, like so. And then for part B, very similar here, right? So now this is for the point A. In this case here then, again, we need the um, magnitude of the force here, which won't change, right? It's still 5G. I've got 5G again, but now the distance will change here. So what's this distance here then? Well, if the whole length is 10 meters and this length here is six meters, that means that this length here then must be four meters, okay? So we get 5G times by four here, which would give us 20G. So again, this is gonna be 20 times by 9.8 here. Just put this into your calculator, right? And if you do this correctly, you should get 196 here. So we get 196 Newton meters here. And again, we do need to stay a direction of rotation here. So again, imagine you were to hold your finger here, right? Holding the rod up 
at this point here, and you were to push downwards with your other finger here, would this now go clockwise or would this go anti-clockwise? Well, in this case here, if my finger was here holding the rod up and I push downwards, it would go clockwise. Okay, we get 196 newton meters clockwise. Okay. And there we have it. So that gives us the solution there to the very last question, question two. And that actually brings the end then of this video here on an introduction to moments.